Jay Stunnel here. Man, I'm excited about today. And I, I've got something here that I don't see that often. Uh, I've been hoping to see it. The last one I saw was, uh, I don't know, uh, probably three or four years ago. But this, what we got crawling around on this log that's float, been floating around and there's barnacles all over it, is a fire worm. Look at that. Also called a bristle worm. Look. I'm gonna put it in here so we can get a close-up look at it. But if y'all haven't seen one of these, you notice I'm not touching it. Uh, the reason it's called a fireworm is because when it stings you, it feels like fire. There's actually 28 different species of fireworms found around the world. This particular species right here that we have, there's not a lot written up about it. There's some scientific publications but whenever you go online to try to find stuff about this fireworm, there's not a lot out there. One thing I did find was that there's a professor over in Malaysia, because these are found worldwide. So there was a professor in Malaysia that actually had a brochure that warned people that these were out there and that they're very dangerous if you touch them. Now there is a species of fireworm that there's a lot of information on and that's called the bearded fireworm. And that one has sort of a reddish looking tint to it and that one is very dangerous. The family that has all these fireworms in it is called Amphinomidae. It just so happens where Amphinomi rostrata is the species and genus name of this worm. It's got these bristles all over it that line the whole thing. So this worm is actually uh, made up of segments um, you know, 60 to 150 segments, depending on how big it is. And uh, each segment has these white bristles that come out of it. And so th th that's what can get you. They have venom in there that if you touch it, they get stuck into your skin very easily and it causes massive pain uh, for about three hours. Uh, the, the venom, it, it create dizziness. Um, you kind of be like, where am I, you know? something crazy like that uh, but uh, as far as i know they can't kill you which i guess is the good news about that but um, what if you actually get stung by one of these uh, worms and in the science world we call these polychaetes so what if one of these uh, uh, fire worms actually gets on you what would you do well this is your answer right here tape so what happens whenever you get stung is it will leave a bunch, say, say if it's on the back of your hand or something, because you're reaching in uh, to pick something up in the ocean and it actually rubs on the back of your hand. Those uh, little hair-like spines they have, which are hollow and full of venom, uh, will actually break off and they'll stick into your skin. So the first thing you want to do is get it off. So you will stick that tape on there and rip it off which I got a lot of hair on the back of my hand, so that didn't feel too good, but probably better than it would if there was actually a worm on there. So you get that off, um, and then the next thing, it's gonna burn, it's gonna hurt for like three hours. Um, you know, similar to what you would do if you got stung by something else in the ocean, uh, like a man of war or something, you would put vinegar on there uh, and warm water and um, see if that helps. Uh, they, you know, uh, it's gonna be painful no matter what, and uh, I've seen videos where people have gotten stung before and even a month later, there will still be red marks. You know, it, it won't be, you know, that intense pain that you get right at first, but you will still have uh, markings and it will be sensitive for where the thing uh, got you. So uh, keep that in mind. What you'll notice, I'll try to put some close-up shots here. Um, they have gills that are on each segment along with the bristles and so you'll see the kind of the darker uh, hairy looking stuff on them and that's their gills that's how they breathe now interesting thing about these is uh, when they reproduce um, they can reproduce a couple different ways uh, sexually and asexually the asexual part i could cut this thing in half and it could regrow and uh, so that's a pretty amazing um, thing to be able to do, huh? You know, if we could do that, we'd have all kinds of stories. Now, you really got to be careful 
with these things here. Uh, if you find, if you're at the beach pretty often, uh, I have found these in purses before. Uh, you know, dumping out a purse that has barnacles all over it that you think, oh, there might be some money in here or something. Uh, I've yet to fi ever find any money except in messages in a bottle. Uh, and I did find a little purse one time that had some Haitian money in there. But besides that, never found any money, but I have found multiple times these fire worms. Uh, I'll shake out the purse first. Never stick your hand in there, shake it out. But that's just to tell you that, you know, I found it on a log here today, but you know, it could be in anything. So they like uh, dark hiding spaces. So, uh, you know, be careful. You definitely do not want to touch one of these things. Now, when I first found this worm, it didn't have all its bristles out. So it can actually have its bristles inside its body. And then when it's touched or harassed, it like squirts these things out. And uh, I've, I'll show some close up images of that, but that gives you an idea about uh, how dangerous they are. Look at that thing. Now the heads of these little guys are little. And compared to the rest of the body, if you look at the head where it has its mouth parts and these little antennas and stuff on there, it's actually pretty small compared to the rest of the body. Okay, um, what are some other things? These things are found all the way into the Mediterranean. Uh, like I said, I found them here in the Gulf of Mexico before. I have yet to be stung by them, but if you look them up, it, there, there are not any good stories about people petting these things. I mean, it all ends uh, in bad news. Uh, they, can, they also can feed on some uh, plant matter and stuff, but for the most part, you know, they're, they're trying to feed on um, animal parts. And so, you know, I found it on a log here. Um, it was next to all these barnacles. So who knows, maybe it was feeding on these uh, crustacean uh, barnacles, gooseneck barnacles. Now you might be thinking, what feeds on these? Fish and, fish and crabs are what mainly feed on these. Now these things can live two and a half years, even up to nine years old. Uh, that's what researchers have found. That's a pretty long time if you think about for a worm. Uh, not up to nine years? Okay, well, what an exciting day to be able to find one of these uh, bristle worms. Uh, I guess that's it for this episode of Beach Coming. Uh, if you find one of these, don't touch it. Uh, share this video with all your buddies so that they know not to touch it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.